Chapter 7 Family Reunion Big Brother told me that Ye Ye, Aunt Baba, Third Brother, and Little Sister were scheduled to arrive in Shanghai on the last Sunday in October. I started counting the days. Little Sister had been separated from her mother, Nyang, since she was just six months old. Now she was almost two, and Aunt Baba had mentioned in her last letter that Little Sister was starting to jab her away in Mandarin with a strong Tianjin accent. How adorable! On the morning of their arrival, Father and the chauffeur met them at the station. I was overjoyed to see my beloved Aunt Baba and Ye Ye again. Third brother looked taller and thinner, but Little Sister had changed the most. Aunt Baba had dressed her in pretty pink silk trousers with a matching jacket and pink cloth shoes. Her hair was neatly combed into two little bare-boned braids that stood up on each side, bobbing as she walked. She looked like a big doll with her large round eyes and chubby pink cheeks, rushing around the sitting room, examining the dishes of candy, melon seeds, peanuts, ginger slices, and salted plums laid out on the coffee table, and then running back to Aunt Baba. All of us beckoned to her and vied for her attention as she teased us by half advancing and then quickly retreating to Aunt Baba's side. Repeatedly, Niang signaled her baby to come to her, but to little sister, her mother was a stranger, and she ignored her. Niang was dressed in a dark brown Parisian silk dress with dangling pearl earrings and a string of large pearls around her neck. Fifteen feet away, I could still smell the cloying aroma of her perfume. Trying to help, Aunt Baba unwrapped a piece of candy and waved it. Little sister ran eagerly toward our aunt. Aunt Baba handed the candy to Nian, who waved it back and forth, attempting to entice her daughter to go to her. Rejecting the bribe and becoming annoyed, little sister ran to the candy dish instead and tipped all the candies onto the carpet. Growing visibly impatient, Nian approached little sister while we scrambled to pick up the candies. Bad girl! Four-year-old fourth brother screamed at his baby sister. You shouldn't have done that, big sister added in a stern voice, trying to curry favor with Nyang. The rest of us remained silent. Don't want you, little sister said directly to Nyang in a distinct voice. Don't like you. Go away. Surprised and hurt, Nyang bent down to pick up her baby, who was wriggling and resisting with all her might. An unnatural hush fell upon the room. All eyes were on them as mother and daughter struggled. Little sister was now howling the top of her voice while tears rolled down her little cheeks. Don't want you, she repeated loudly. I'm Baba, I'm Baba, tell her go away, go away. No one said a word as Nyang carried her weeping and kicking child and placed her firmly on the couch next to her. Little sister was pushing blindly against her mother's neck and face, now red and contorted with frustration. Keep still, Nyang screamed futilely again and again in a piercing voice. In the melee, the string holding her pearls broke, and the precious gems tumbled one by one, rolling across the carpet onto the wooden floor. This proved simply too much for Nyang. Thoroughly exasperated, she gave her baby's face a stinging slap. Little sister only cried more loudly. Deliberately and viciously, Nyang now set about beating her daughter in earnest. Her blows landed indiscriminately on little sister's ears, cheeks, neck, and head. Everyone cowered as the punishment went on and on. The grown-ups avoided looking at each other, while we children shrank into our seats. I couldn't understand why Father, Ye Ye, and Aunt Baba were making no attempt to stop the assault. Why wasn't anyone objecting? I wanted to run away, but dared not move. I knew I should remain silent, but words choked me, and I felt compelled to spit them out. Finally, I could bear it no longer. Quaking with terror, I blurted out, Don't beat her any more! She is only a baby! My protests seemed to halt Nyang in the midst of her frenzy. Little sister's screams also simmered down to a whimper. Nyang glared at me. Her large, prominent eyes appeared to be popping out of their orbits with fury. How dare you, she said through her teeth. For a few seconds, I was fearful she was going to pounce on me instead. Across the room, Aunt Baba gave me a warning look and a slight shake of her head telling me to say no more. In those few moments, we had understood everything not only about Nyang, but also about all the grown-ups. Now that Nene was dead, there was no doubt who was in charge. Fuming with rage, Nyang slowly extended her right arm and pointed her index finger at me. I felt panic-stricken and saw only my stepmother's long, red, perfectly manicured fingernail aimed straight at me. Then I heard her words, loaded with malice, which made my heart jump and the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Get 
out, she snarled in a cold, distinctive voice. I shall never forgive you. Never, never, never. You'd better watch out from now on. You will pay for your arrogance.